This week on TGC News, new stuff from Magpul, Timney, Canic, Beretta, Shadow Systems, Diamondback, Mossberg, Desert Tech, PWS, Matador, and a new lever gun that you will not want to miss. 10 pounds of crap in a 5 pound bag, let's go! Welcome back to another episode of the Gun Collective News. There's a wall of cool stuff behind me. Blah, 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 blah. You've seen the intro. It's SHOT Show Week. And there is a huge mountain of stuff. We gotta start climbing. We gotta climb to get it all covered. And I'm gonna attack this sort of like an ADHD squirrel. First up, accessories. Magpul has dropped a few new things for us this year. First is an all metal body magazine for the SIG P320. This is the first all metal mag from them that I'm aware of in... So that's cool. MSRP is 35 bucks and they hold 17 rounds. They also released the new T-Mag, a translucent mag. Those have an MSRP of 24 bucks each. Should Lancer watch their backs? I don't know. Magpul also released two new stocks, the DT carbine stock and the MOE PR stock, which is a very affordable precision style stock if you squint hard enough, 65 and 45 for those. They also released a couple new like traditional style stocks for the Savage Axis and the 1022. They also are expending the DACA line of hard cases, which is rad, and we have more to cover. Let's keep going. Rugged has a new can called the Surge X. If you aren't familiar, their shtick is ultra durable cans, belt fed rated even. Their first can, the Surge, is 10 years old, so this is a refresh of that. It's modular, fairly lightweight, even though it's entirely stainless steel, and the MSRP is $11.69, which is flat out too high in today's market. It's probably a really good can, but damn, that is not cheap. In more suppressor news, KGM Technologies got the rights to produce what I'm going to call the Glock Brick Mod from a German company called Fisher Development. You guys have probably seen this thing floating around the internet before. Pricing isn't announced yet, but this could be interesting. It reminds me a lot of the Silencerco Maxim 9. I'm curious if any of you guys are actually thinking about buying one of these. In new optic news, Primary Arms has a few. There's a 1 to 8 and a 1 to 10 with the ACSS Nova reticle. I feel like they could just drop the ACSS at this point. We don't need it. There's also a 1X micro prism and a couple of micro red dots. And since it's primary arms, it's likely they won't be stupid expensive and probably won't be absolute trash. I don't know. Franklin Armory announced they are releasing a binary trigger for the Strybog SP9A1 and A3 called the SPS1, and it's part of their BFS3 line of triggers. If gun companies could add more letters and numbers to the names of shit, that would be great, okay? And here's the fun part. It's 500 bones. I'll let you guys tell me if that's worth it. Timney also has a new trigger, and it's for the M&P. Heck yeah. This fits both the Gen 1 and 2 of the M&P, except the shield. To my knowledge, the king of Gen 1 triggers was always Apex. And another option is always good. MSRP here is 184. I found a new company making wood furniture for ARs. They're called American Icon, and they have a few options depending on what length you need. All of them are within 50 bucks of 400. I have a special place in my heart for guns with wood furniture, especially ones like the AR-15 that never got issued that way. I may have to get a set of these to try out. Keeping it rolling for accessories is Nosler with two new suppressors. There's the SR-30K, a tiny 30 cal can, and the SR-33 Altai, Alti, a big bore lightweight can. These are intended for dudes that like to hunt with a suppressor, which should basically be anyone that hunts. And the MSRPs are $729 for the K, and the 33 is not listed yet, but I'm guessing around $1,200. We'll see. You know what's not 1200 bucks? Supporting our sponsor, Blackout Coffee. I'm gonna keep this ultra simple this week because there's a lot of stuff here. If you buy coffee from these guys using our link or the code TGC, blackoutcoffee.com slash TGC, use the code TGC, it directly supports what we do here. So please do me a favor and just try it out. We have a partner roast with them called Tenacity. So if you're not sure what to get, start with that one. I would really appreciate your support, guys. I, I, it really actually genuinely helps us. Thank you, and let's keep it rolling. How's about we get into some handguns now? You guys like handguns, right? Uh, pew, 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 I'm dumb. How about one that you weren't expecting at all? Say hello to the new H9 from Daniel Defense. You may remember a gun called the Hudson H9. This is that, but revised and in theory better. It's a striker fire nine 
with a really low bore axis due to the recoil system being lowered into the front of the frame a bit more. Get subscribed if you want to see the review because I've got one right here. MSRP on that one is $1,300. I'm pretty hyped to try this one out since it's the first ever handgun from DD. I'd love to hear what you guys think of that. Rolling forward, Kanik has a new one called the TTI Combat. They partnered with TTI, and as far as I know, this is their first pistol with a factory external comp. This also has a brand new polymer frame, a giant magwell, and a bunch more stuff that we just don't have time to cover. MSRP is right at a grand, which actually is really solid value here. It's like a competition pistol that is affordable, I guess. I'm sure it won't suck because Kanik has managed to not release trash yet, so that's just precious. Precious! High Point released a Yeet Cannon in 380. So basically the YC9, but 380, YC380. Okay, I feel like I should start a list of no one asked for this type guns. I mean, I want one because it's a threaded tiny little 380 and it could be quiet, but I know there are officially zero of you who were sitting home 15 minutes ago before this episode and going, I want one of those, I need that. MSRP is $299 and it won't be ready until spring. Yay, shot show nonsense. Walther released two new versions of the PDP steel frame, the full size with a four and a half inch barrel instead of the five inch with 18 round mags, and the compact with a four inch barrel and 15 round mags. MSRP on both is 1700. We reviewed the five inch gun recently, so if you wanna know if it's any good, the answer is yes, it's good. Kimber has managed to stay in business for another year, which is kind of surprising considering the latest from them is adding a rail and ambi safeties to the KDS-9C. Still a bad name. And then charging you 400 bucks more for it. They also put a threaded barrel on the R7 Mako and called it the tactical version for $734 for the model without the optic. I'll be honest, I, st I still want to shoot that full-size gun. It looks great. Moving on, Shadow Systems released two new handguns. There's the MR920P and the XR920P. They're the same as the previous models, but now have an external comp on them. That's neat. MSRP here is just shy of 1300 on those. They also released their own suppressor called the HS923. That's, what is this product name? <laughs> Which is meant to be a lightweight nine mil can from aluminum and titanium, that's cool with claims just like everybody else that's selling a modular nine can these days. MSRP is 822. The short configuration would be fun on that YC380 though. It would cost twice as much as the gun, but it would, yeah, that'd be cool. TSOS USA announced three new versions of the PX9 carry, the IOORNTS. MSRP are between 340 and 370. Let's hope they don't suck. Beretta sent me a list of new stuff that is so substantial. <laughs> Let's just power through this. There's the new Manurin 50th anniversary wheel gun for 11 grand. What? Holy sh**, right? There are three new versions of the 92 starting with the GTS. There's a launch version for 1200 and a regular for nine. And then they have frame mounted decockers. Okay, there's also the 92XI SAO Tactical. It has giant sights and a threaded barrel for 1050. Then we have the new versions of the PX4. Why is that still on the market? The Carry 2 and the GSD, the German Shepherd Dog, is both made in partnership with Langdon Tactical, and I think it's weird to call a gun the SD without having a threaded barrel. Like, what What planet? Those are 875 MSRP. There's also the 30X Tomcat, which is a tuned-up tactical version of the Tomcat. It has an optic and everything. It's kind of awesome for to see like a 32 ACP like this. MSRP there is 600. And then they also have a new tactical version of the APXA1 Compact, which is at my feet right now. We have a review of that coming soon. So subscribe, follow, etc., to see that. And rounding out handguns this week is Diamondback with their new revolver called the SDR or self-defense revolver. They are trying to hype it up a bunch, but it's a small 357 that holds six rounds, fiber optic sights, exposed hammer, MSRP is 777. With how good semi-autos have gotten, there's just not a time. There's not a time when this is a better choice for that much money over a semi-auto. It might not be a bad gun, but it's just not a better choice for self-defense. Woo! 
You guys still with me? <laughs> we aren't even close to done yet. So instead of a deal this week, usually a deal of the week, by this, uh, just make sure you're following, subscribed, you like the video, because this episode was a boatload of work and I would love to see you back next week. That would be awesome. Diamondback also released something they're calling the TG9. There's a bunch of other letters and numbers, but I'm leaving them out. It's a 16 inch blowback AR9 that comes with a drum bag and some wood furniture similar to a Tommy gun. They want 1700 for it and to be less mean than usual, I'll say I like the wood on that. That's neat. Mossberg has some new stuff this week. In fact, they have 28 new versions of stuff that they already sell. These are like adjacent version, so I'll just hit a couple highlights. The biggest theme is mounting optics directly to the receiver of a bunch of their shotguns. That's cool. Some come with an optic, some don't. You can have the cut, just pop the little thing out. Some have camo, some don't, and that includes the big boy 940 Pro Jerry Michelek edition. That's cool. There's also some new versions of the Silver Reserve over under, including a tactical version, which is pretty neat, with rails for like an optic and a light. I like that. Basically a ton of new versions and colors across the board for Mossberg. Tokarev USA also has a new shotgun called the TTF-12 Titan. This is a $200 12-gauge semi-auto that takes Mossberg 500 furniture. It doesn't specifically say this, but I'm betting this is just like another Turk Nelly clone and 200 bucks is really cheap. There's also a new one from a company called TNW Firearms. It's a version of their ASR takedown rifle that takes 1911 mags. MSRP is 800 bucks. All I can think is why. Sure, mags are plentiful and FUDs have money and buy guns too, but can, can we just not? Like, what? what, what no. Okay, Desert Tech has a new one called the Wolverine. It's missing some vowels, but you get the idea. Long story shorter, this is basically a simpler, supposedly better version of the MDRX that came out a few years ago. It has 49 fewer parts than the MDRX, a polymer chassis, and can be had in four different calibers and like a few different setups, SBR and blah, blah, blah. They claim that you can swap between long and short frame cartridges easily, AKA 308 and 556, same chassis. That's cool. On launch, you can either get a 20 or 16 inch barrel depending on the cartridge and the MSRP is 2,500. Could be interesting if the accuracy is there. They brag about it, maybe, well, we'll see. Speaking of expensive guns. Hold on to your butts. Because these next ones might sting a little bit if you're poor like I am. The company is called Detroit Gunworks and there are two rifle. The Hitsville is a 24 inch 6.5 Creedmoor with a bunch of really fancy features. The Sherwood is a shorter length 308 with similar features. The Hitsville has an MSRP just shy of eight grand and the Sherwood is just shy of 6,900. Nice. For that kind of money, these things better stack dimes at a thousand yards. That is serious coin. They better be really good. Moving on from there, still more. We are plowing right through all this. Thank you for sticking with me. Matador Arms has two new ones, the Mat 9 and Mat 9K pistol versions. Essentially, these are enclosed recoil system pistol caliber carbine pistols. I hate this industry sometimes. <laughs> Previously, you could only get these as uppers, and from what I understand, they're pretty sweet. Well, now you have the option of getting it as a complete gun. You could even throw like a brace that folds on the back there with an MSRP of a grand. I suspect there will be a full-size carbine version coming as well. The next one is a very interesting one. It's from Primary Weapons, AKA PWS, and it's called the UXR. Essentially what we have here is a rifle that much like the Desert Tech can be swapped between large and small frame cartridges, 308.556. That's a very easy one to understand. The execution on that here is by using a modular lower and magwell combo, and of course swapping the internals and barrel. The serialized portion is just the main upper receiver. Everything else can be swapped. They've got a whole like system and family here. It's also piston driven. That's cool. On launch, it can be had in three calibers, 308, 556, or blackout. However, there are at least 11 different conversion kits on their website listed as coming soon. 
76239s on there, some other stuff. Mm. MSRP is 2650. And this is the first time I've ever thought, wow, the Desert Tech is the cheaper option. <laughs> Could this be everything that the ACR wanted to be? Maybe. Sound off in the comments. Yeah. Talk on the ACR. <laughs> And we've got some new stuff from Aero Precision and Stag Arms. They're basically the same company, so I'm putting them together. Deal with it. Aero has a full Ambi AR coming called the M4E1 Pro, okay? And a new 22 cam. But the real thing that matters here is the new lever action from these guys. Now, I'm told this is still sort of in development, and they're kind of just teasing it, but there are two versions. The one for Aero as a brand is the more tactical version. The one for Stag is the more classic hunty style version with metal and wood. They're going to offer these in 3030 and 4570, and I'm going to try to convince them to also do stuff like 357 Magnum, 500 Magnum, 44 Mag. It could be a while before we see the real version of this, but maybe, maybe we'll, we'll convince them to bring that to GunCon. Stay tuned for that. Tickets go on sale late March. Also, if you are in the video still and you made it this far, thanks for giving a shit. <laughs> like, I really, I genuinely appreciate you watching this. I will see you guys next week covering whatever we missed this week. Holy crap, that's a lot of new stuff. <laughs> Later.